Hi, and welcome back to my videos on CSS. In this series of videos, we've been looking about how to apply um, formatting to tables by using CSS. In the last video, we talked about beginning to create class styles um, in order to apply borders onto our table. And you remember there were a couple of advantages to using class styles to format tables over tag styles, and they are that um, class styles are much more flexible. You can do much more with them. Um, you can also apply multiple class styles to a single element. And finally, class styles can be applied to different types of elements. If I create a style that has a, uh, let's say, a border and a background color, and I define that as a um, table style, the only thing that that can be applied to is the table tag. But if I create a class style, I could I could add that particular style to, let's say, an H1. So in the last video, again, we started working on class styles, and we uh, saw how to create borders and add borders to our table. In this video, I want to start talking about background colors. And background colors are just as easy to apply to tables, either with a tag style or with a class style. But again, I think that um, class styles, because they can be reused over and over and over again, um, in a very flexible way um, in this particular circumstance with um, uh, borders and backgrounds. I always think that it's nice to do those class styles. So I'm going to go ahead and create a class style and I'm going to call it blue BG. If I'm creating a class style for a background color, I always end it in dash BG. I've seen some people prefer, because of the sorting order, they do BG dash blue. And again, it's all in how you work, whether you like it better or not. Some people also use BDR, I'm so, um, BDR for border um, to identify their border styles. And again, that's entirely up to you how you do that. I'm going to leave this on as BG-Blue. And the property that I'm going to select, obviously, is going to be the background color property. And I'll use my Dreamweaver um, tool here to go ahead and select the exact color that I want. Now whenever you're looking at background colors in this color picker, be aware that the smaller the swatch of color you have to look at, the darker that swatch is going to appear, usually. So when I look at this right here and apply it, you're going to see that there's a difference. And you're going to, I'll show that to you in a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and select that as my background color and go ahead and click OK. And so now I've got a blue background. I also want to create a gray background. So I'm going to go ahead and create background color. And I'm going to go ahead and do uh, a light gray for that. So I've created two class styles for my backgrounds. Now let's go ahead and see how we could apply this to our table. I want my heading section and my footing section to have um, the blue background color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this background gray color to zebra stripe every other row. Let's see how we would do that. I'm going to come in here to source code and I found my T head section. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the class attribute. And there are my backgrounds. And again, you'll see the advantage of putting the BG at the beginning there. That's the reason why some people like um, that a lot. I'm going to go ahead and select BG Blue and save it. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is come down to my foot section. And again, use the class style. And I'm going to choose, I'm not sorry, use the class attribute and choose the style BG Blue. I'll save that and click over here, and you'll now see, because I'm in Live View in Dreamweaver, there are the colors that have been applied to my heading and footing areas. Now let's go ahead and put the zebra striping on. Now, if all you're going to do is alternate with the background color, you really only need one color like I've created here. But what some people will actually do is they create a style and they call it um, BG-Odd for the odd rows and then specify a background color. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it a darker 
um, gray for this one here. Not a lot, and we'll do all A's, how about that? Not terribly darker. And then they create another background color and they call it BG-even. So the even colored rows inside of my um, table would have this particular item applied to them. Now there's nothing that automatically applies these styles. You still have to manually do it. All the naming convention does here is help you identify what the styles are all about. So I'm going to come back into my source code here and you're going to see the first row here is my header row and that has region, sales manager, telephone, and stores inside of it. And then we have the northern row. And I'm going to go ahead and click in the row item, or the row element, TR element, and I'm going to go ahead and select the class style. And I'm going to go ahead and select BG odd. I'm going to use the second style that we created. And then I'm going to click in the next column, and again select the class style there, and the class style that I'm going to select for the second uh, row is going to be BG even. So we'll scroll down just a little bit more and do that one more time. Class odd and then class even. If you've got a huge table, this would take forever to do this way. But um, if you've got you know a smaller table like what I have here, it's not too cumbersome. And you can always copy and paste as well as there are methods in uh, JavaScript and PHP for zebra striping or banded striping on tables. So um, larger tables, that may be something you want to look into. So I've gone ahead and saved my styles. I'm going to click over here, and you'll see I've got a dark gray border on all of my odd rows, and I've got a light gray border on my even rows. And you can't, it's kind of a little bit hard to see that um, there, but you'll see the... Um, the contrast between the background and that light gray. I'm going to go ahead and take these odd backgrounds out and we'll see how that looks. That was a little bit too dark on the gray. There we go. So now I'm just sort of alternating there. Now the last thing that I want to do is I want to apply a border, a dash border on the footer here to separate the footer from the body and a thick solid border to separate my heading from my body. So again, I'm going to use a couple of um, styles that we created before. I'm going to use the thi uh, solid thin bottom border. Actually, I'm going to use the dash thin bottom border and the thick bottom border for these um, items. So I'm going to come back in here to source code and here is my T head section. Now I've already applied the background blue class. Now there's a variety of different mistakes that you can make at this point. You can put another style name in quotes or you can repeat the class attribute. So you shouldn't do any of that. What you should do if you want to put multiple class styles into a single element is click in between the last letter of the style that's there and the quotation mark and then just type a space. And Dreamweaver will automatically bring up these hints showing you the styles that you can choose from. You could just type it in if you're not using Dreamweaver, but I'm going to go ahead and do thick bottom border there. And then I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to my footer section. Now, all I have is a dashed bottom border, so that won't really work applying it to my footer section here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it to the last row in the body. So I'm going to go ahead and again click in between the style, the end of the style name and the quotation mark, hit a space, Dreamweaver brings up my options here, and I'm going to go ahead and say this is a dashed thin bottom border. I will save this, and when we click over here in Live View, you're going to see I get that thick black bottom border on my T head section, and I get my thin dashed bottom border on the last row. So that's a little bit about how you would apply background colors as well as um, combine background styles with border styles. In our next video we're going to show you a few more tricks to working with um, borders and backgrounds.